Children, grab your pillow, and parents, grab your lighter. Make yourself real cozy, because we're pulling in a lighter. It's a podcast about the fairy tales you've heard many, many times. This time will be different, because we're stoned out of our minds. So spark up a bowl, and tuck yourselves in. Once Upon a Dime is about to begin. salad so there was a huntsman and he's walking about in the wood and and then he comes upon this little old woman and she's like begging him for food because she's really hungry and he took pity on her so he gave her the food that he had which was like some food in his pocket so you know a couple cracker crumbs or something (laughs) maybe okay so he's a huntsman which means that he goes out and he's in the woods and he's Mm -hmm. he's hunting stuff so he had to keep food with him and they didn't have coolers back then so they had to put them in pockets and then she's a, like so grateful she's so happy so then she uh she tells him listen my friend to what i am going to tell you i will reward you for your kindness go your way and after a little time you'll come to a tree where you will see nine birds sitting on a cloak shoot into the midst of them and one will fall down dead The cloak will fall too. Take it. It's a wishing cloak. And when you wear it, you will find yourself in any place you wish to be. Cut open the dead bird. Take out its heart and keep it. And you will find a piece of gold under the pill. Under your pillow every morning when you rise. It is the bird's heart that will bring you this good luck. She like, says that, uh, you know, that he's going to come on, uh, come upon nine birds and they're all on a cloak. And so he needs to shoot the gun in their direction and they all flutter away, except one will fall down dead and with it, the cloak will fall as well. And then so go in there and take the cloak and then cut the bird open and take his heart. Oh, and the cloak is a wishing cloak. Kill a bird. Take out his heart. Now, the heart is a different, like, gift. Like, the cloak in and of itself is a pretty awesome gift, but the the next, like, the added benefit is that you get this bird whose heart, if you take, uh, will bring you gold under your pillow every night. So, he, he does it. He goes. Yeah, and he's like, well, if this is the truth, then that's cool. But if not, okay. So, he's walking and... He sees nine birds and he's like, holy, this is true. This is going to be awesome. (laughs) And so, so he does what the old lady said and he, and he shoots the gun and all but one fall down dead and he takes the cloak and he takes the heart and he goes home and next morning when he wakes up, he checks under his pillow and there's gold there. It's real. And he's like, all right, can't wait to go to sleep again. So he goes to sleep again already. <laughs> so uh, he does this for a while and he doesn't even like think about the cloak. But this happened. And then he's got this whole stockpile of all this gold. And he was like, all right, well, I should probably leave because what good is all this gold if I stay here at home? He leaves. <laughs> he's wandering, wandering, and he finds himself wandering into the forest. And then he comes upon this castle. And in this castle, he sees in a window. So, and he sees in the window that there's this old woman. And then there's this young, beautiful young girl. And then, switch scenes, the witch knew he was coming because she's a witch. So she knows things in her brain. She knew it. And she, she tells her daughter, because it's her daughter, this young girl, there's going to be a man coming with gifts. And I want those gifts. Mm-hmm. She wants those gifts. And then flashback to the other scene. And the hunter man, he sees the castle and he's like, I'm really tired and I've got all this gold. I can afford anything. So I'm going to go sleep in this castle. <laughs> so he goes to the door and he... Tells him, look, I want to sleep here. I'm tired. Here's some money. Here's some money. And and they want, and the witch, she wants all of his gifts. So she's like, oh, yeah, come in. Come stay. Sit down. Make yourself a home. And then he sees this young, beautiful woman, and he falls in love with her. Just like that. Just like that. 
she's like, now's the time. And then she stole a heart. Yeah. She was a good pickpocketer. The old witch takes his gold. And then he's he must have been there for a couple days because, like, it said, like, and then when he would wake up and the gold wasn't there, he didn't even miss it because of how in love he was with this beautiful young girl. So he didn't even realize. She's like, it's time to get that cloak. She doesn't want to do anymore. Like, she's like, you already made him poor. Like, you already took away his wealth. Uh, I don't want to do anymore. And then she got really angry and she was like, I want that quote cloak. I will have that cloak. And then the girl was like, okay, fine. That was it. That was the only convincing that she needed. <laughs> and then the huntsman comes upon this beautiful young girl and she looks really sad and he loves her. So he's like, what's wrong? And she says, oh, there, there's this, there's this mountain where all these <clears throat> beautiful, rare diamonds are grown, and only animal can get to it. Men can't. Man can't get to it. There's. I just found out about this place, and it's like so beautiful, and I'll I'll never be able to go there. <laughs> so dumb, sad. So he's like, come under my cloak. <laughs> <laughs> So he like gets his cloak over her and he wishes to go to this this place with these beautiful diamonds and away they go. They get there and then all of a sudden he feels really tired. Like just out of nowhere, he feels super, super tired. And he was like, how about we take a nap? Because that's the thing to do on a first date. <laughs> take a nap. He puts his, his sleepy little head in her her conniving little lap and then he falls asleep and then, and then she steals the cloak off of him and wishes to go back home and she leaves him there so she wishes away and then he wakes up and he realizes that they played him like a fool he's terrified he's like scared and he's alone and he doesn't know what he's gonna do like how is he How's he going to get off this giant rock that no man can get to? I don't have my cloak. I can't wish off of here. What what am I going to do? I'm going to die up here in diamond land. And then he heard these giants coming because this is where the giants lived. And he was like, so I'm going to act like I'm sleeping. It's like, that's the best thing for me. And that's going to deter these giants. And these giants come stomping by and one of the, there's three of them. And one of the first one's like... The first one's like, what is this thing? And then the other one's like, I don't know, kill it. And then the third one's like, no, don't even bother. It's fine. He's just going to go to the top of the hill and he's going to catch a cloud and he's going to leave. And then this is going to be our mountain again. They leave. They, they, they agree to the third, the yeah. third troll's suggestion. They leave. they leave. And then the huntsman, he's like sleeping or he's pretending to be asleep, and he's like, yeah, that worked. Now I know how to get off this mountain. I'm going to go to the top, catch a cloud. So he goes to the top, and for real, a cloud came and got him. <laughs> it landed him into a garden. He's like, what am I going to eat here? He was like, I can eat salad. It'll give me strength and replenish, replenish me, uh, which I've never heard anybody say that. So he's in the garden and he's making a salad. So he takes a bite of the salad and right when he takes his bite, he turns into an ass. <laughs> and then he grabs another piece of lettuce, takes a bite and he feels weird again, but it's because he's normal. And then he's like, I'm going to use this salad to get my revenge. He rested there for the night or something. And the next morning he took the, uh, a piece of good salad and a piece of bad salad with him. And then yeah, he and wandered, he hoping that he would find the castle, but he had to wander for days because it, he didn't have the cloak to just be a... And he did. He stumbled upon the castle, and he got there, uh, and, he, and he painted his face all dirty, uh, so he was unrecognizable because he was going to trick the, the old lady, the witch, as it were. He disguised himself as a messenger of the king. So it was like a slave. He disguises himself and goes up to the castle and he's like, he's a, he, I guess he knocks, but they come out and he's like, uh, I am just a messenger and I, I'm, 
out on an errand for the king to find the best salad. Uh, and I found them. I believe I found them, but they're starting to get like starting to wither in the sun. She was like, uh, I don't believe you. Uh, let me taste that salad and see if it is uh, the best salad that you eat. Yeah, because she's a greedy old witch. And if it's good enough for the king, then she wants it. So she so she, she said, I'll take it back to the kitchen and prepare it. I'll yeah, toss that prepare. salad in there. Uh, you guys mingle for a moment or whatever. She goes to the kitchen and she grabs a, a leaf of the lettuce. And as soon as she takes a bite, she turns into an ass and starts making an ass out of herself. Maid servant uh, comes to the kitchen and realizes that there's this delicious salad here. So she takes a bite, right? And she turns into an ass. She's talking to the beautiful girl. Her name is Carla. And he's like, hey, Carla, uh, how's the weather? She's like, I'm super hungry and I want some salad. What's taking so long? He's like, well, I'll go check. He, he helps himself to the kitchen in her house. And then he sees that they're both asses, the the yeah. servant and the, and the old witch. And then uh, he grabs the salad. I guess he puts it on a plate and takes it to her. And he's like, so you don't have to wait. I, I brought you some. And she takes it by and she turns into an ass too. So he just turned everybody into an ass and then put them on leashes and walked out of the castle. Get tied him together and started walking. And then he's like. Where am I going? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and he's like, him. he's like thinking of like, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? He's like, oh, I can make someone watch after them and then I'll decide what I want to do. But, uh, but now I just got to find someone. And then he walks upon the miller's house and he's like, hey. So he knocks on the window and the miller's like, what's wrong? What do you want? And he's like, hey, uh, do me a favor. Take care of these asses for me. And he's like, I will pay you whatever you want. And the miller's like, okay, I'd be happy to do this for you. And then he's like, okay, now this is what I want you to do. There's three of them. They need to be taken care of in a particular way. First one is the oldest one. And he says, uh, give this one three stripes and one thing of hay. Stripes is basically a beating. Okay. So, and then he's like, in the second, the middle one here, I want you to whip once or stripe once and give three bays of hell. And then he's like, and then with this youngest, I want you to give her three bales of hay a day and no striping because he just loved her still and he couldn't bear the thought of, of her being whipped by another man. <laughs> So then he leaves, and then a few days later, the miller contacts him. He went over to the castle. And the miller was like, look, your oldest ass died. And these other two asses, they're starving. They're about to die. I just want you to know, like, do you still, do, what's going on? Uh, the huntsman was like, go uh, bring them to me, I guess. Yeah. So now he has to go back he should have brought him in the first place like why would you go all the way to the castle like so uh he's like bring him to me and he does he brings him to him he gives him salad that good salad the salad that make turns him back so he the beautiful maiden's there and and he's like well all right this is what i want and she's like come goes down on her knees and she's like oh i'm so sorry for for doing all that to you. I feel real, real bad. I'll give you everything back. Your cloak's in the closet. And, and I'll, I'll go get that, that bird heart for you. And he's like, I don't, I don't, I don't want that. I want you to have it because... You will be my wife. What's mine is yours and what's yours yeah. is mine. And they lived happily ever after. Until they died. To close the chapter on this episode, until we meet again, and so the story goes, we turn the page to find the end.